Today we are talking about relational aggression, all right? So this is serious and I think it gets kind of swept under the rug when people talk about, oh, relational aggression, oh, that's mean girls or something like that. Does that exist? Absolutely. Are there groups of girls excluding other girls? Yeah, it happens. It happens with, with men and women, boys and girls, okay? Everything that is, uh, is bullying, the same definition that it's targeted, it's repeated, right? It's um, completely intentional and there's a power differential. All that's at play, but now what's different is that it involves relationships to do it. And Ben and I, when we visit and we, we geek out about this stuff, we call it, we don't like to even call it relational aggression. We call it puppet master bullying, all right? I want you to imagine somebody pulling the strings behind the scenes. You didn't even know that their actions were actually dictating your own actions. And when you look back, they're up there, they're pulling the strings. Is that fair enough? Absolutely, and that's what creates the imbalance you're talking about is that social imbalance mm. of like, hey, I'm here, I'm controlling everything. You know, and the thing is, this takes um, a, a much bigger toll in, in a lot of areas than, than other forms of mm. bullying, right? Like, I worked with a student, um, ninth grade, ninth grade kid, in the same year, he was teased relentlessly in one class uh, all year long, and he was also beat up by wow. some kid, like, unexpectedly, months apart. And when I was meeting with him in my office several years ago, uh, we were talking about the different, you know, what he'd experienced, and he didn't even talk about getting jumped and beat up. What was much more impactful was having to go to that class every single day and listen to these two or three people that ganged up, you know, behind him. And like, you know, so so even though we're sometimes like, oh, you know, Lil, you know, you don't have a black eye, so you're okay. Right. This actually has a lot longer lasting kind of impact. So you know, what we got to do is we got to cut the strings, and that's what we want to talk about today. How do we cut? How do we cut those strings in a relation? The motivation sometimes is there to let other people pull our strings, and the way they do that, Ben is we feel connected. So if you're pulling my strings yeah. and you're spreading stuff about this guy over here or that girl over there, and I say negative things about them as well. Ah, we all of a sudden have a connection. We got a connection, we're tight. And I'm thinking, hey, we're buddies, right? Yeah. But what's really happening is you're pulling my strings. Right. So how do I cut my strings mm -hmm. then from you? We have to ask ourselves, is, this, is engaging in this going to improve my relationship? No good relationship is built on excluding others or spreading viciousness or even lies or whatever, or, so, e or even things that are true, negative things about bingo. others. So maybe there's your first step in, in uh, we're, we're, we're all about prevention, all about awareness and identifying it. If you all of a sudden, you're in a relationship, you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden you start harping on, negatively on somebody else and you start, or, or your friend starts harping on, negatively on somebody else and there's this temptation to be like, thank heavens they're not talking about me right, right. now. I think let's let's do a little pile on right now. Yeah, yeah, that person this, that person that. So maybe that's the first step is identify if that's happening, somebody is eventually gonna bing, bing, pull the strings, right? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, well, and you know, it's funny. It's funny you say that. That's a great sound effect. But it's <laughs> it's funny you say that because that we see that all the time. And 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 a, and one thing that I really try to drive home with students that I work with is if you have that friend that's always talking negatively about other people. Chances are they're talking really Bam. negatively about you when That's... you're not around too. So cut the strings. Awesome. There is a, a theme, it is a nice way to talk about it. Also broken record if you're getting sick of hearing about it. They're not. Um, they're not, Ben. It's, I'm not. You're, 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 you I'm and not I love this. We could talk yeah, hours about this. Yeah. Lucky for you guys, this is only a few minute video. <laughs> okay. So relationships, quality relationships, knowing what those are and having those real relationships in our lives is literally what helps build uh, and the, the framework for defense, um, it, you know how they say the best defense is a good offense, right? Is that a thing? In I, I, I've heard that. I've heard it the other the way other too. The other way. I don't really know. Uh, you can but tell. But it is. But the idea is building strong relationships will defend us against bullying, okay? So the minute, um, Ben and I do lots of social skills groups with students and kids, and uh, one of the common questions we'll ask kids is, uh, in, in kind of the warm-up group, it's like, hey, how many buddies do you have? How many you know friends do you have? Can you know give us give us the rundown? Because maybe we want to include them in these groups or whatever. And sometimes people in those group settings, we're doing this to kind of see. They'll say, oh, I got 20 friends. I don't know how many to to invite. I got 500 Facebook friends. And all that stuff could be true, could be accurate. That's not our point. But here's what we do know: every one of us, the the really good pals that we have, you can count them on one hand. And that's not unusual, right? It takes a lot of work to maintain those relationships. So the idea is, those folks that are closest to us, those people that are really gonna have your back, 
you can count them on one hand, that meaning there's not that many of them, and work every day on, on strengthening those relationships. And if you feel at any moment that that work, you're doing all the work and it's not paying off or somebody's pulling your strings, watch out. Got them. Some really great questions to ask ourselves are, this, this friend of mine, do they talk negatively about other people when I'm with them? Chances are they're talking about me too. It's really good to look at what their relationships are like with people that they used to be close with, but they're not close with anymore. Mm. How do they talk about them? Mm. That's going to be, be a really good indicator. And then I think the most important thing to ask is, how do I feel about myself after I hang out with this person, after I spend time with this person? Um, those are a really good way to gauge it, whether that's a good friendship or whether it's something we need to cut the strings on. Bingo. And uh, final tip is for school personnel. If you're aware of this, if you, if you have evidence and you're using an authentic reporting system and, and you see evidence of relational aggression, one hallmark mistake that school uh, professionals, teachers, administrators will do, and this is uh, all, for all good intentions, they will address the victim, they will address the person that they think they heard from. We know that the best way to address relational aggression is actually with the peer group. You, you actually have to bring that group in and start talking about what's going on. And you have to let them know that you, we know what's going on, that somebody's strings are getting pulled and it's unacceptable. And it's not unacceptable in a zero tolerance kind of, I'm bringing the hammer down right. kind of unacceptable. It's, this is unhealthy relationships, you guys. And I don't know, Ben and I are in this business because this is like a lifelong learning thing. Uh, some adults don't understand this stuff. So why would we think kids are gonna all of a sudden, you know, snap into shape and be like, oh, we know how to navigate all these relationships perfectly. If you see these problems, consider them as an opportunity to teach and do some instruction. And wink, wink, you should use bullyology to do that. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Hey, good call. I love talking about no, I bullying love it. every I love time. Love it more. Love it more. Thank you. Thank you.